solar radiation. This word combination poses quite a threat in the Russian language, since we often continue to associate the word radiation with gamma rays, destructive for all the living organisms. In reality, though, radiation usually means any radiation, and solar radiation is no more than broad spectrum and corpuscular radiation from the star that is closest to us. It is the solar radiation that impacts the majority of processes occurring on the Earth. Moreover, the birth of the planet itself and the development of life on it wouldn't be possible without it. Solar radiation in general is a source of energy that the Sun transmits to our planet. The electromagnetic component of the solar radiation spreads at the speed of light and penetrates into our atmosphere. Solar radiation reaches the surface of the Earth as direct and diffuse radiation. The spectral range of the Sun's electromagnetic radiation is incredibly broad and includes anything from radio waves to X-rays. But the maximum intensity is registered on the visible yellow-green light, or the bright light of our daylight companion. Although the intensity of the reflected or nighttime light with a wavelength of 500 to 700 nanometers is also quite high, the lower intensity of the solar radiation is found in the infrared band. But it is also very important because it warms up the Earth and is central to the formation of our climate. The wavelength in this band is 760 to 2800 nanometers. The ultraviolet band of the electromagnetic radiation, 280 400 nanometers, is a key to vegetative processes. We are also familiar with it because it affects the human skin. Under small portions of UV radiation, our skin becomes darker, and when we overdo it, we get sunburned. This radiation is also harmful for eyes. The longer radio waves and the shorter and more dangerous gamma rays, or ionizing radiation for the most part, do not reach the surface of our planet, because they get held up in the upper atmosphere, and specifically in the ozone layer. Ozone is present everywhere in the atmosphere. However, it does form a thin but dense layer at approximately 35 kilometers above the Earth's surface. Nevertheless, a certain safe radiation background does remain at the surface level. It depends upon various factors, like the solar activity, for example. Besides, the intensity of solar radiation depends on the height of the sun above the horizon. At high sun, the path that the sun rays have to travel will be significantly shorter than at times when the sun is on the horizon. Because of the increase in the path, the solar radiation intensity changes as well. The intensity also depends on the angle of the sun's rays, because this determines the area or the territory that is lit up. It means that the same solar radiation is distributed over the larger area, so the intensity decreases. The intensity of solar radiation depends on the air mass that the sun rays have to pass through. In the mountains, it will be higher than the above sea level, because the air mass that the sun rays have to travel through on their way is less than that in the above the sea level case. Atmospheric pollution also increases the intensity. Another important factor is the distance between the Sun and the Earth. Even small changes in the distance, which is in fact dependent on the eccentricity of the orbit, lead to a substantial decrease in the amount of radiation that reaches the surface of our planet. Such decrease is proportional to the square distance between the planet and the star. The intensity of solar radiation is usually measured based on its thermal effect and is expressed in calories per surface unit in a time unit. There also exists a solar constant that describes the amount of solar energy that in a time unit reaches a surface unit located in our atmosphere at the right angle to a sun rays at the average distance between the Earth and the Sun. This constant is equal to 1.94 calories per square centimeter per minute. Solar radiation is measured with the help of actinometers and pi heliometers. The share of energy contributed to the overall intensity of solar radiation by its corpuscular component is relatively small compared to the electromagnetic one. It is often referred to as a solar wind. There is also a portion of solar radiation that consists primarily of protons moving from the Sun at the speed of 300 to 1.5 thousand kilometers per second. This flow is destructive for all the living organisms, but luckily it does not reach the Earth's surface either, and is instead deflected by the Earth's magnetosphere in the space. One may say that auroras are in fact the side effects of this radiation. 
In total, the Earth receives less than one two billionth of the energy emitted by the Sun, but this is quite enough for the billions of people living on the planet to survive.